sea star populations along the west coast have been suffering from a die-off that's attributed to sea star wasting syndrome. And we've seen major die-offs in the areas around Vancouver, BC, Seattle, Washington, Monterey Bay, California, and Santa Barbara, California. And in these areas, we have seen relatively um, abundant populations of, of sea stars um, uh, die. And so it's very difficult to find individuals at all at the sites that previously had um, many sea stars present there. Um, sea star wasting syndrome is a set of symptoms that that progress um, within an indiv individual until they ultimately die. And uh, normally what happens is individuals start behaving a bit different. They'll twist their arms up or, um, or not look in the normal, or act at least in the normal behavior of, of, of sea stars that are healthy. Uh, they can sometimes look deflated, kind of look um, curled up, and then um, lesions oftentimes develop on the, the epidermis, their skin. Um, which can rupture, spilling out some of their intestines and gonads, and then sometimes the arms will, will rip apart from the body, um, and then ultimately the individuals die. Primarily what people see, though, at the very end of it is a very large bacterial mat that they it's oftentimes you know, described as a big pile of goo, and that's basically the, the tissue that has been degraded by, by bacteria. So my research primarily involves two aspects um, related to, to this problem. Um, one is surveying areas to determine where the disease is present and um, and uh, how it might how it might be moving or progressing as time goes on or disappearing um, in some cases. And uh, and so that's primarily field surveys. Uh, I do a, do scuba diving primarily to to detect um, whether. Uh, populations look like they um, have currently have synd uh, the syndrome or whether they've had it in the past or whether they look they look healthy and then um, the other part is a set of laboratory experiments that I do um, where we um, will put individuals that appear to be infected in with healthy individuals and then um, and then determine whether they can transfer it among individuals or maybe put an infected water for example in with what appear to be healthy individuals and see if they can transfer we have no idea what it is right now, so things are, that's really cool, kind of being on the cutting edge of the research. And the stickers on each of the tanks, usually the first layer of manipulations was just sick and healthy individuals, and those are the green and red tags, and so, and the tank, easy way to number each of the tanks so we know who's in what tank sort of thing. About once a week or so since they Normally, these organisms are intertidal, so the tide comes in, brings their food to them, if you will, um, brings that clean water in, and then it goes out, and it comes in and out, whereas here they're in a static environment. So the waste from the sea stars, when they're eating the mussels that we provide for them, builds up, and so we change the water to make sure that that doesn't end up impacting experimental manipulations we're doing. So generally I try and do that about once a week. You may have seen the water being poured down the sink and it might concern some folks, but uh, we treat the water with bleach so we make sure that we're not putting anything harmful from our lab right back out into the environment and potentially infecting more individuals. Most of the researchers, I mean there's an entire team, it's not just Dr. Miner, up and down the coast that's been looking at this and so you can really help out if when you're walking down at say marine park or whatnot and you find a star that has whitish lesions is the usually the first sign of the condition that's really really obvious um, and you do want to be careful because on the top of the star there's a there's a little circle and that little circle that's naturally whitish is part of the sea star that's that's not a lesion so be careful about that and yeah keep an open mind keep Keep looking. I mean, citizen science is really helping us out on this project. Feel free to talk to Dr. Miner. His email should be up on the biology department webpage. If people are interested in, in getting involved, there, um, I would suggest going and looking at the um, Sea Star Wasting Syndrome webpage that the UC Santa Cruz hosts, and um, and I think it's seastarwasting.org. It'll provide some additional information about how to get involved if, um, if you'd want to. And we have lots of citizen scientist groups that are helping out 
um, and trying to trying to figure out where the disease is, how it's spreading, and um, and and help solve the problem.